special service it's been so far. Yeah. Our last Devil Tree service till the end of the summer. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, very quickly, we know we got a lot of graduates in the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Not just from college, but we got preschool, oh, yeah. elementary yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if your child graduated, we made them a card. So make sure you go see oh. Regina before you leave. Yeah. Man. Guys, let's give it up to the BS's one more time. powerful sharing uh, and very timely. I love how the spirit moves. Uh, Courtney sharing was like my D time with every single one of our guys. Uh, and uh, I very, very much appreciate you guys sharing your hearts yes. and pouring it back out here in Portland. Uh, we're honored to have all the, uh, being in Portland, having all the guest visitors and speakers and whatnot. Uh, you know, we're going to get to God's word today. You guys fired up? I told Juanito he better he better preach with passion in that translation because you all know, need to make sure you stay fired up too. Amen. Amen. We're gonna get into God's word so God's word can get into us. But but I need a promise from you guys. You can't have any walls this morning. You gotta you stop thinking about lunch. Stop thinking about that person that hurt you last Wednesday. And, and I want you to be have an open heart so God's word can touch you this morning. Amen. Turn with me to First Chronicles 16. Come on, bro. You know my prayer this morning is that as Courtney shared that your time this morning at this hotel will radically change your life forever. Okay. You know, and it's, uh, it's been great transitioning from a victorious mission season into a summer harvest. Nice. And uh, I'm excited for our summer campaign. Are you guys? Yeah. We're going to shine because it's summertime. summertime. You know, and right now we're in the, the month of June where we're consumed in June. Yes. And we're not going to be consumed with ourselves. We're not going to be consumed with sin or bad attitudes, but we're going to stay consumed with him. Amen. Come on, Amen. Come on bro. And in 1 Chronicles 16 and verse 26, the Bible says, For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him, strength and joy in his dwelling place. You know, strength and joy live in God's dwelling place. So that means joy lives in where God dwells. Wow, no, bro. And you live with God, eh? Come on. Hey, you hey, walk with hey, God hey. every day? Yes, sir. Okay. So if you're walking with God every day, then I want to make sure that you're walking with joy every day. Come on, bro. Because if joy lives with God and you live with God, then you should be living with joy, amen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and I love what Jacob was sharing in his contribution just oh, yeah. about how life was looked like it was great. The outside looked like it was joyful, but on the inside it wasn't. Oh, and today we're going to be talking about being joyfully consumed. Amen? Oh, you know, we're going to approach it from a little bit of a different angle. Okay. John 10 says that Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, no. yeah. So he doesn't want you to be joyful in your walk with yeah. God. Right. He wants you to sit there this morning with a, with a little bit of a grumpy attitude. Oh, he doesn't want you to be rejoicing after this lesson. Right. In Matthew 12, the Bible says that how can you enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions... Unless you first tie the strong man up. Yeah. Now, I believe that's a, a, a spiritual principle right there. Yeah. Come on, bro. I believe that, that, yes, you need to make sure you tie up Satan every day. Right. But I think he's trying to tie you up every day. Yeah. Come on. I think he's trying to tie you up so that he can steal from you, kill from you, and destroy you. Right. You know? Today, I want to share about five joy killers. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, being in the military, but being married to uh, my wife, who was counterintelligence, she, she would figure out how the enemy was going to attack so that you could be best prepared and defend properly. Wow. And so, being married to her, it just gets me to think like this. And if we're going to fight against Satan, we want to know how is he going to attack us. Right. right? And right. these are five areas I believe he wants to do and, and the ways he wants to attack to steal your joy of your salvation okay. from you. Come on, bro. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, even though you may be a hardworking man or a woman, you might have a dynamic character. A, a lack of joy, a lack of morale will stop you from being a fruitful disciple. Yeah. Yeah. Turn me to Ezra chapter 3. Nice. Let's go, bro. Juanito, are you preaching with passion? <laughs> <laughs> man. Oh, Vanya. Vanya. Oh, 
Oh, they're beautifying my voice. <laughs> Ezra 3, in verse 10. The Bible says, When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments, and with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, that with symbols took their places to praise the Lord, as prescribed by David, king of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, He is good! His love to Israel endures forever! And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept. They wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple be, being laid, while many others shouted for joy. No one could distinguish the sound of shouts of joy from the sound of weeping because the, the people made so much noise and the sound was heard far away. You know, I think the first thing that can kill your joy or your, your morale and your walk with God is over comparing. Yeah. It's over comparing. You know, we need healthy comparing, but over comparing will steal your joy. You know, it's interesting here in the scripture. It says that they built the foundation of God's temple. Yeah. The young people saw this foundation and they were fired up. On, They're right. like, look what we're building. But the older generation was wailing and crying. Mm. Wow. Because they remembered what the older temple looked like. Right. Wow. And it's interesting to me how you can have the same situation. Yeah. You can be staring at the same thing. And some people are saddened and some people are rejoicing. Right. 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 The only difference was one group of people had something to compare it to. Mm. Wow. That's the only difference. The other group had nothing to compare it to. Point, so they were excited. Yeah. They were excited what was about to come. On, they were excited about what was taking place because they had nothing to compare it to. You know, a lot of times we, we can over compare. We, 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 we do this in life. You ever give a, your child a, a gift? At Christmas, maybe you have two kids and you give them one gift. Oh, right. Right. They're fired up when they open their first gift. Yeah. Yeah. But when they see their sibling's gift, uh -oh. Oh. Yes. end of the world. <laughs> you, you got them what? Yeah. Well, you got this awesome racetrack. Right. But you got them this car. <laughs> you love this one. But now they have something to compare it to. Right. All of a sudden, it's the end of the world. We do it today. Yes. You get a brand new car. You feel good about that car. Yeah. Yeah. And then you see that nice Tesla drive by. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I bought a used car of my brother. I was fired up. I was so excited. It's got this full moon roof. Yeah. I was feeling great. It's used. It's leather. I'm like, this thing's good. Yeah. Right? And then I saw Priscilla's brand new car. Oh. <laughs> A lot of times people can become depressed or saddened in their walks with God or life situations, and then we could because we start comparing them to others. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I do believe God gives us each other, each other's ministries, each other's walk. We have each other in each other's lives to be inspired from and learn from. Yeah. I know we were all inspired by the Spanish ministry when they baptized Nata and Elisa and Salvador. Yeah. I know we were all inspired by the campus baptizing Gabe, Jessica, and Jocelyn the last two weeks. But sometimes we can compare too much to other situations, and we find ourselves disappointed. I think something we need to learn is not to compare ourselves to other people's situations, but learning to compare ourselves to our past situations. Yeah. Now bear with me. We, we always want to do a little better than you did yesterday. Yeah. What I mean is you always want to do a little better than you did last week. Yeah. You want to do better this month than you did last month, this year than you did last year. You right, always want right. to strive for progress and do better in your walk with God. Yeah. Just a little better than you've ever done before. And so in order to keep your joy of salvation high and in the right spot, I think we need to compare ourselves to the right things. Our past and not over comparing to other disciples. But let other disciples inspire you and have a healthy comparing in your walk with God. Amen? And that turn me to Numbers 13. Okay. The second area that I believe can, can, can really steal your joy or kill your morale is self-defeating thoughts. We need, we need self-promoting thoughts, amen? But Numbers 13 and verse 31, it says, But the men who had gone up with him said, We can't attack those people. They're stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. 
They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are great size. We saw the Nephilim there. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And we looked the same to them. You know, this is interesting. This is the report of Canaan. Only 12 spies went to go spy out this land. And 10 out of the 12 come back with a negative report. They come back with a, with a bad, faithless report. Right. You know, what I've come to learn is being full of faith is not something the majority has in this world. Right. The majority will always struggle with the faith, if not inspired to have the faith. If not given faith through great preaching and great leadership and some, some good discipling. 10 out of the 12 come back with a negative report. Come on, bro. And the very interesting thing here is in verse 33 where it says, We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. I think it's funny. How the heck do you know that? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't go interview them. Right. You didn't say, hey guys, what do you think of us? We're about to come into the land. Right. <laughs> you, know? you have no idea if you're stronger or not. You had no idea what they thought about you. They never even saw you. You were right. spies, unless you were the worst spies in the world. Right. Right. Right? <laughs> they had no idea what these people thought. But they assumed they looked like this because that's how they saw themselves. Come on, bro. Yeah. Right. That's what they thought of themselves as. Wow. See, we've got to understand self-defeating thoughts will become self-fulfilling prophecies. Yeah. Yeah. If we start thinking like this, you'll eventually reach that point. You know what's interesting? You guys ever wonder, why is the lion the king of the jungle? Mm. <laughs> the lion, why is the lion the king of the jungle? Because oh. right? he thinks he is. He's yeah. not the biggest, it's the elephant. Yeah. He's not the fastest, it's the cheetah. He's not even the smartest, but his mentality is different than everyone else's. Right. He thinks it, and so he is. Come on, bro. If the elephant just had a radical change and was like, no, I'm the king, <laughs> that elephant's stomping the lion. Yeah. No chance. But because the elephant, he's like, uh-oh, I'm a meal. I need to run. He takes out. He takes off the other way. Because he thinks about himself differently than the lion thinks Come on, bro. Let's go. Guys, one of the things that if we're going to keep the joy high in Portland, on, high in your walk with God, you've got to deal with your self-defeating thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to challenge you. The next three weeks, practice having self-promoting thoughts. Come on. Every morning and every night, make a list of what God calls you and remind yourself of those things. Come on, bro. Some of us remind ourselves daily what Satan believes that we are. Wow. I'm nothing. I'm worthless. I can't do it. I can never change. Wow. Why bro. not me? I shouldn't be here. And you recite that over long enough, you will believe it. Right. And it will become who you are. But you change the narrative. You change how you talk to yourself. You start talking to yourself the way God talks to you. What God believes in you. What he's called you to be. And I promise you, at the three weeks, you're going to be a different man and a woman for God. Yep. Come on. Amen? Amen? Turn me to Luke chapter 5. Let's Come on, bro. Go, bro. Let's go. Come on. Preach, bro. Let's go. Preach, bro. Love it, bro. Come on. Bro, with you. Learning. Luke 5. The third thing that kills joy in our walk with God is letting the past dictate the future. Oh, baby. We need to stay focused on what it can be, not what it was. Amen? Amen. Come on, bro. Luke 5, verse 1. All right, bro. That's awesome. Let's go. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gisneret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put it out a little from shore. Then he sat down and he taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, We've worked hard all night. We haven't caught anything. Right. But because you say so, I'll let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. And so they signaled their partners to the other boat to come and help them. They came, they filled both boats so full that they were beginning, beginning to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and he said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. They said, then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. 
And so they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Mm. You know, I love this story. And I love that Jesus waits to go to Peter's boat until after the end of the work shift. Mm. Right? right? He's right. worked hard all night, yeah. six hours in the dark, the cold. He's cleaning up the job. It's done. Right. He's washing his nets. One of the last things you would do. Yeah. Like, all right, we're good. Uh -huh. We're gonna call it a day. <laughs> right? And yet we believe God determines times and places. Yes, and so Jesus purposely comes to Peter at this time. Right. You know, I think sometimes God does this with us. Mm -hmm. You work really hard. And then at the very end, he calls you to still give a little more. Yeah. 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 Because I think he's really, we have limitations. You may not think, you might think you're all in, but you have limitations. You oh, stop yeah. yourself far before it gets uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. right? Like some of you do that with your gas tank. Like when it hits like halfway, <laughs> you're like, gotta get gas. You're freaking out. Right. Other, you, others, you're living on the eve. <laughs> and you never learn to fill yourself up. Yes. But we do that spiritually. Right? We give about half of ourselves. We're like, no, I gotta go back home and recoup. We gotta get strengthened up. You know, I don't have much else to give here. Right? Or some of us were just always exhausted because you've never filled yourself back up. Right? So but what I love is, is he, Jesus comes to Peter at the end of his worship to really see what's gonna come out here. Yeah. Right? And he hops in his boat. I don't know about you, but if some random guy hops into my work mobile, whatever it may be, whatever it is, he just hops in my car. I'm not Uber, I'm not doing Uber. What are you doing, man? Come on, Marcos. Right? And he says, hey, why don't you put it out back into the water? He gives a lesson. Peter's probably falling asleep during it. He's so tired, he's worked all night. And yet he's like, you know what? Let's go fishing. Mm -hmm. He says, let's go fishing. And Peter's response was, Master, man, I've been working hard. Right. Come right? On, but what I love is that Peter chose to obey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, usually life goes better when we just humble out and just obey God. Yeah, so, man. When we can just obey the scriptures. Yeah, and on, yet, bro. after an all, all night of putting down the nets, you would ex Peter would expect here that from doing it one more time, mathematically, the same result would happen. Right. right? Hey, I did this like a thousand times for the last six hours. Yep. Jesus, the same thing's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Mathematically, Jesus, this is just makes sense. This is what is going to happen. Right. What I love is that the Bible isn't always mathematical. Yeah. Right? The harvest isn't always mathematical. Right. Come on, yeah. bro. One thing that's cool about being a disciple is nothing that's happened in your past has to dictate your future. Right, right here, though, he, he had a fruitless, fruitless or an empty net type of life. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't catch a thing. Nice. And yet by choosing to do it one more time, Come on. he had such a big harvest. He had on, such bro. a big catch. Yeah. Come on, Preston. It began sinking both boats. Yeah. See, the thing that we need to instill into each other is that, yeah, okay, maybe you haven't been fruitful the last 20 times you've shared your faith. Right. But you got to do it one more time. Come on, come on, bro. You got to go do it one more time. Yeah. I don't know. I'm scared to give my whole heart in that way. You got to do it one more time. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You got to do it one more time. On, the next time's going to work. The next time you do it, who's to say it's not going to be a net-breaking result? Yeah, a boat-sinking uh, result? Yes, yeah, that's good. You just got to do it one more time. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. You know what I love is that we read about Philip. Philip had to go through Simon the sorcerer before he met Ethiopian the eunuch. Yeah. Yep. See, a lot of times we don't understand. We just want to go find the Ethiopian eunuch. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Simon the sorcerer kind of let down Philip a little bit. Like, man, great conversion. This is my intern. He's fired up. He's hungry for the gift. He wants it all. And he gets laid out at, like, the, the conference with all the apostles. Sorry. Yeah. Dang it. That's my guy. Right? Yeah. And then, two chapters later, he meets the Ethiopian eunuch. So open. Yeah. Goes and plants churches in Ethiopia. Right? It's incredible. You have no idea who you're going to meet. Winston Churchill once said, success is going from failure to failure to failure, here's the key, without loss of enthusiasm. Nice. Yeah, wow. Without loss of enthusiasm. We gotta, yes, we gotta be persevering. You gotta learn to push through the hard times as a disciple. Amen. But you gotta learn to do that joyfully. Yes. 
Rejoice always. Come on, bro. I, I truly, when I teach denying yourself, denying yourself does not mean doing it with a bad attitude. Right. Right. That's not biblical self-denial. Right. Right. right? That's not. Right. Right. Jesus right. denied himself, but he, he approached the cross, which was a joy set before him. Yeah. Right? His attitude changes in his three hours of prayer. Yeah. Right? I'm ready. Let's go. Here comes my betrayer. Come on. There was a mindset yeah. change. Yeah. See, when we when we do what God calls us to do. You have to do it with the right heart still. Yeah. See, I believe oftentimes God allows you to fail before you succeed. One, so you appreciate the success that you receive. Right. Yeah. right? But also, I think he wants to test out your persistence. Nice. Are you serious about this? Right. You really want this. Yeah. Even more to see if we really maintain our joy through it. Oh, yeah. Come on, press. Can, can you maintain your enthusiasm when it goes from hardship to hardship? Right. Or are you only fired up? Or are you only excited about your relationship with God when he gives you good times? Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Right? Everyone can be fired up in a good time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. A disciple can be fired up no matter the times. Right. Yes. They can just love life. Come on. Right? We can just love it. So don't let previous failures rob you of future success, family. Come on, bro. Now on, let your faith dictate your future, not your past. Amen? Yeah. Come on. Turn me to Luke chapter 12. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Great, bro. Great, bro. The fourth thing that will steal your joy is having expectations without inspiration. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. We, we need to make sure we inspire each other before we expect. Amen? Amen. Maybe you got to inspire yourself before you expect. Amen? Amen? Luke 12, verse 42. Mm -hmm. It says, The Lord answered, Who then? is the faithful and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time. It will be good for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth. He will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, well, my master is taking a long time in coming and then begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants. And he chooses to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. That servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much will be asked. You know, having expectation without inspiration. You know, I think one thing we, we, we teach a lot in, in, uh, is that when someone is given a lot, and we, we always kind of uh, compare it to when you're given a lot of responsibility or you're given a lot of people or maybe a good situation, then much is expected from you, right. which I believe is fair and right. But at the same time here in this scripture, what he's referring to, he's talking to his disciples and that he's entrusted them with his training and his teaching. Right. And he's saying that I've spent more time with you guys. I, I've taught you, I've inspired you, I've helped you, I've showed you. I've spent more time with you than anyone else in this world. And because I've given you this training, then much is expected from you. See, but what happens sometimes is we can put so much expectation onto people or onto ourselves Without the training, right. without the inspiration, right. without the correcting or the encouragement. Mm -hmm. And when you expect out of each other what you've not put in, you're only going to create exasperated men and women for God. That's true. Come on, bro. No inspiration without expectations will lead to exasperation. Mm. But inspiration with the expectations can lead someone to greatness. Wow. See, if we inspire each other and expect great things. Yeah. We will start seeing each other do amazing things on, for God. Amen? On, and turn with me to 1 Timothy 6. Let's go, bro. Let's go, bro. Come on, bro. Let's Let's go. Go. Come on. Where'd you go? Y'all want to be joyful, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. The bad girl want to be joyful? Felix, you want to be joyful? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, brother. Oh, yeah, Felix. Here you go, brother. <laughs> the fifth thing that I believe can hurt and kill so much joy or... or ruin someone's morale in their walk with God is not enjoying their life. Yeah. You gotta flat enjoy your life. Do you guys love your life? Yes. Not everyone does. Do you guys enjoy your life? Yes. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. 
Do you really enjoy it? Let's see. Check out First Timothy 6 and verse 17. The Bible says here, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. This is such a simple scripture, but here it's teaching, don't put your hope in money. Some of you would be more fired up this morning if you had a million dollars in the bank account. Which shows where your hope is. It shows where your joy is. If you were driving home or you had someone else driving you home in like a nice Mercedes Benz, you'd be more fired up. Come on, Michael. <laughs> Michael's like, bro, it's in the shop, man. Come on. <laughs> I gotta ask, where's the hope? Is your hope in the uncertain things of this world? Is your, as Jacob helped us understand, is your treasure still on this earth? It will never fill you up. You'll never have enough. That will never be enough to put a lasting smile and pure joy into your veins. It won't. You know, don't put your hope in these things that are so uncertain. You know, ministry can be so uncertain at times. I've been able to be in the ministry since 2014. Not very long, but long for me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but but there, there have been so many ups and downs, and it goes all over the place. And there have been bad times and hard times, but then there's been baptisms and restorations, but then fallaways and financial success and financial hardship. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's all uncertain. Yeah. It's all uncertain. And if you put your hope in all of this stuff, you're going to go up and down with it. Right. Okay. You're going to go up and down with it. You're going to be really fired up when you're baptizing and then really sad and miserable when somebody walks away. Yeah. You're, you're going to be really fired up when your bank account's doing well and financial success is there, but then really miserable when there isn't. Come on, bro. Because your hope is in the uncertain. Come on, bro. You know, but on the other hand, if you can learn to let God and let go and just trust God, just let God take control of your life and be in control. Right? You can understand that God has given us everything oh, yeah. for our enjoyment. Yeah. Come on, bro. That is the promise of the scripture. Right. That's good. So he's given you everything so you can enjoy it. Yeah. He wants you to enjoy life. Yeah. You don't have to walk around with your head held down and be all sad. Right. No, you can be fired up. Yeah. You can wake up and be like, man, money's tight, but God's good. Yeah. I'm taking the bus to church. Yeah. You know, you can be so fired up. You know, I don't need to drive my car because of the gas prices. I can still get to church. God's good. Right? You can be fired up. You understand everything that's been given to you is for your enjoyment. Do you enjoy your ministry? Yeah. You love the Spanish ministry? Yeah. You love the marriage ministry? Yeah. You love that little singles ministry? Yeah. You love the little sing uh, campus ministry? Yeah. Do you love that teen ministry that is forming? Yeah. Yeah. It's not even there yet, but it's coming. Right? Do you love it? It's for your enjoyment. Do you love your marriage? It's for your enjoyment. Your kids are for your enjoyment. Now, if they're like the teenagers, they might not feel like that, but it really is for your enjoyment. Right? This city is for your enjoyment. I love Portland. I talked to people that have been here for a while. They're like, yeah, but it's not the same Portland. I said, I don't know the old Portland, so I feel like that guy in numbers... Where I don't know. I have nothing to compare it to. So I love it. I love Portland. This is amazing. Yes, come on. Right? Your, your little town, Beaver. I live in Beaverton. I didn't know we call it Beaver Tron. Beaver Tron. I'm loving that. I'm loving that. We got nicknames for towns. I'm good. I'm fired up. See, that's how you know I'm still not as Portland as these guys. I'm still learning. But, but all of this that God's given you is for your enjoyment. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. Come on, Are you enjoying it? You know who, who's truly enjoying their time in the Northwest? Is Clay Erickson. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Clay Erickson moved up from the desert of California yeah. like six, six months ago, eight months ago, and he goes fishing every week. Yes. He just caught a three and a half foot long salmon, yeah. and he is fired up. His Facebook is, should have moved to the Northwest sooner. He loves what God has given him. He goes, it is truly for my enjoyment that I am here. Nice. He knows. Come on, Clay. You know, 
have been so caught up in uh, ups and downs of ministry or life before, and it's exhausting when you just try to ride those waves. Yeah. Yeah. We need to understand that we have a great life. Yeah. Yeah. We have a great life. Yeah. Now, some of us, we don't always see it like that. Yes, America's changing. It's getting a little rougher. I saw a post that said, America, where you get shot wherever you go. And I said, it's not, it's bad, but it's not that bad. Come on. <laughs> like, the things that are happening are not good, but it's not Africa. Right. right. Like, I, we talked to Blaze, and he's like, yeah, you get chased off campus with machetes. And machetes. I said, uh, I'll take Portland State yeah. University. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, life is good. Yeah. We have it good. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But, but, you know, for me, I always wanted to be a Timothy. I always wanted to be a guy to plant a new church. Right. And, and yet I've had the honor of being a Titus, of taking over a new group or nice. what, whatnot. But it's interesting. Every time I've moved into a new area or, or taken over a group or just, just been in a different church, something I've always noticed is there's some uh, very few unhappy Bible talk leaders that are working really hard, but just not loving life. Yeah. Not loving life. You know, you can't study the Bible and baptize people when you hate your life. Yeah. You know, it, it is almost, it is literally impossible to sit down and be like, hey, turn to Psalm 119 with me. Blessed are those! And you're like, blessed are those. Blessed are those who seek God with all of their heart. You want to be like me, man? Right, bro. No, I do not. Right, bro. Now, you might think you're really good at faking it. Right. You might think, like, hey, blessed are those who seek God with all their heart. And people still are like... I don't, I don't want to be like that. There is a spiritual giving in your Bible studies. Yeah, yeah, right. Right? It, it, if you don't really believe it and you're not really living it out, people are going to know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right? You guys can have somebody come up to you and tell you something and you're like, they're not honest. Yeah. Yeah. You know it. Yeah. You can just tell. Right? You know, it's funny. Sean and I had the great privilege of celebrating seven years married last Monday. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but, uh, and it's been incredible. It's been incredible. And over the last, set, Sean and I were, were together before discipleship, so we've seen the bad times, and we're living the good times. Amen. Amen. But, but, I, it's cool. We went on this long hike uh, with all the kids <laughs> on my back. Uh, and it was good for, like, the first half mile, you know? Uh, and then it was hard. But Eli's at this age where he's, like, three and a half, and he says these funny things. Yep. And there's, the, during this hike, he just said some things that got us cracking it up, and we were laughing, and, and we were enjoying time, and, and yet, going into this, we were really tempted to be sad. Mm. You know, it was, it was, the ministry thing is hit, and it's hard. I've always been an emotional guy, yeah. so in high school, if we were losing basketball, I was crying. Aww. I, you can say, oh, but I was in high school. <laughs> Like, elementary school, like, oh, that's cute, you know? As a, like, a young adult, nice. Dude, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> and, guys, I went to a technical high school, so it was not sports-focused. I wasn't going anywhere, you know? But I was emotional about it. A girlfriend broke up with me. I didn't want to eat for, like, days. I felt sad. I just, I was an emotional guy that would really feel it to my gut. Right. You know, and so when ministry things hit, I get really tempted to feel really sad. Yeah. I get tempted to feel really depressed. I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to deal with it. I don't yeah. feel like praying today. I don't want to read. Yeah. And then I was like, ah, oh, it's our anniversary today. Yeah. You gotta feel fired up. <laughs> Come on. But I just, I'm so grateful for the time to pray together and just get into the scriptures and trust God's promise that when we do things God's way, that God's results will be there as well. And to be joyful, not in the waves of ministry, but in that we have salvation, we have a relationship with God. Amen. Guys, big, big picture. Don't get to the point where, where you, we have to care. And we have to learn to care a lot. Yes. But don't get to the point where things affect you so much that you don't enjoy your walk with God anymore. Right? right. right? Love God and trust me that it's going to be a joyful time. Yeah, yeah you got to put your hope in the right place because ultimately the joy of the Lord is ours. Amen. Yeah. God lives in a place of joy. And we live there with him. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. So let's go be joyfully consumed in this gym. I love you guys. Love you.